What's up, Breakthrough Success listeners? Mark Burry, the podcast and coach here, helping people launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts. And in this episode, we have a lot of great content around social media marketing and the email list. Two are actually going to square off where we talk about which one of these places should we be spending more of our time? Where do they really fit within our overall strategy? So that's what we're focusing on in this episode. The guest who joins us today, he's an Amazon bestselling author and the third highest earning super affiliate in the internet marketing niche. His two-step system has helped him consistently rank as the highest earning and highest converting for industry-leading vendors, uh, such as Matt Bacak, John Cristani, and Anthony Morrison. Uh, his book, List Building Lifestyle Confessions of an Email Marketing Millionaire, uh, that is his latest book. Really great read. Uh, go over to igorsbook.com, which will be in the show notes to get your copy. But our guest is none other than Igor Kafitz. Igor, Mark, thank, you. To thank you so much, man. That's an exciting introduction. I'm excited to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Igor, I'm so happy to have you on Breakthrough Success. Definitely a lot of content to dive into. Uh, before we do that, though, can you just share with us uh, your thoughts on email marketing, social media marketing, uh, how we play with those platforms like time and all that stuff? So can you share some of your insights on those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you if you follow mainstream media, if you follow people like Grant Cardone and Gary Vee, the perception you get is that social media is where the money is at because it's always in your face. And because people, when, especially when they procrastinate and they want to avoid making tough decisions, they end up spending their time on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok, whatever the next uh, big social media platform is. Now, the thing is, though, that out of the 9.73 hours each day that we spend online connected to the Internet, only about 34 percent of it is spent on social media platforms. And that's not where most buying decisions occur. Most buying decisions, both based on the numbers as well as uh, the uh, surveys and research conducted by Nielsen Research Group uh, show that people prefer to get pitched in emails. They don't mind getting frequent marketing emails from businesses they uh, trust and support. And they more, make more buying decisions with email than with any other media, especially now when it takes on average about 22 days to take somebody from a point of, oh, I now know what you're selling and let me go think about it. And all the way to the point where they say, okay, how do I sign up? You know, it takes about 22 days at this point, which is way longer than it used to. Now, over those 22 days, we also need to make 32 points of contact. And that includes anything that you can think of. That includes the retargeting ad they'll see on YouTube, the email they'll get on Tuesday, the one they'll get on Monday, the Facebook ad, you know, whatever, whatever that may be. So because it takes now more time to move people from a position of a prospect or a visitor and to a position of a buyer, email is now becoming more important than ever. And reports are showing that it's only going to um, grow as far as the preferred marketing media for companies that actually track their sales and marketing dollars. Yeah, and social media definitely has more of the buzz, but uh, I feel like for social media, you should think about how can you get people on your email list? Like right now, I'm looking at YouTube. My goal is to get 100,000 subscribers in five years. But uh, with that platform, like I want to drive people to my email list. That is one of the main goals I have for that channel because that's where more of the money is. So can you talk with us a little bit on what kind of an email marketing strategy we should have in place to communicate with people, grow our list and engage as well? All right, sure. So um, it's funny you mentioned your YouTube channel because I got a buddy who's got about 74-ish thousand on YouTube. And I asked him one time um, how big was his email list and he told me it was only 900 people, which means it's only 900 actually engaged people who are willing to buy something from him. And that's not a lot. And so that's really the difference between having a ton of buzz and having a buyer firepower. For example, my friend Sean Stevenson, who I'm going to be seeing next month in the mastermind, um, you know, he has a bunch of videos that went viral, right? So he's got videos that went on to uh, collect over 20 million views. 
and he said that the only thing that that done for him was it did not put much money in the bank yeah, i mean it, it did help him increase his speaking fees a little bit but as far as actual dollars in the bank immediately when the video goes viral didn't do much for him but it's also uh, something that increased his q factor meaning that whenever he's reaching out to companies or people or speakers or gv partners now he's got a little bit more of a presence just like i said buzz but it's not necessarily the most profitable thing to do. So you're absolutely correct when you say that we, we ought to strive to move people from social media platforms to an email list where we will then email them every day with what I call infotaining content, something that I first learned from my friend Ben Settle, uh, who I consider to be uh, probably the smartest email marketer alive right now. So you should study him if you're interested in email marketing. And so the, this approach dictates for you to be entertaining, more entertaining than you are informing them. So mm -hmm. kind of like giving them um, a, a broccoli dipped in chocolate, if you will, because people want to be entertained. That's the, the, the currency of the market today. That's why Hollywood is growing bigger every day. That's why people go on YouTube and social media. You know, they want, they crave the entertainment because they're bored, they're frustrated, they're like living this life of quiet desperation. And so they're craving something to escape from it. And when you're moving them to your email list, you now have to combine that with, of course, introducing the solution you're selling. So then you can move them, you know, over uh, that line, if you will, and have them become your customer. And it's interesting you mentioned the entertainment. I mean, I've seen this in play a little bit. I've seen like Russell Brunson. I know he's a big advocate for like, you know, that entertainment side. But I feel like for some people, it's a little harder. Like if you're a gaming channel or if you're into sports or something like that, like depending on the niche, the entertainment, like it's a little easier to see how to make the connection. But for like digital marketing, that's a very information heavy topic. So how do we put in the entertainment for something that's more info happy. Well, uh, incidentally, it's something that you're already doing, Mark. For instance, you're doing this with a podcast. You're making it entertaining. You're making it informative, but you're also keeping it very entertaining. You can tell it by the tone of your voice when you're introducing a new guest. You can tell it by the way you're setting up the environment. You can tell by the kind of questions you ask because you can be discussing the same topic. And this is something I learned uh, when I was writing my book. It's basically you can take the same idea and you can deliver that idea in a very boring way that will not engage anyone and, and people will never remember it. And you can then it, it, it present the same idea in a very exciting way that makes people remember. Now, a great example to that is uh, a format of a story. So if you email your list and you use a story to illustrate a point, that story can not only be entertaining for them, but can also move them way more effectively towards the purchase than just telling them what to buy. A great example is um, uh, if you're in a niche such as the prostate niche, for example, if you're marketing to males over 40 years old who've got issues with their prostate, and this is example courtesy of my friend Ben Sell, by the way, because he, he's doing some marketing in that niche. So imagine sending your list an email that talks about how, you know, you have this buddy, his name is Jerry, and Jerry d just turned 32 uh, last year. And uh, one, one night, Jerry couldn't fall asleep. He felt that he really needed to pee. So he goes into the bathroom, but he can't pee. Like, he, nothing comes out. So it turns, you know, and he tries and tries and tries for about an hour until it just hurts so bad that he goes to the ER. And then they stick this little tube up his penis or something. And so all of a sudden, it becomes this really uh, gory, detailed story that you can't really get that image out of your mind. So that's a part of entertainment. You know, that's that's one of those entertaining particles. Now, if we take something boring, like give me give me a boring topic. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't want to say something that like like painting and like this family is not like a hot thing to do. But I know for other people, it's their passion. But we'll use that as the example. OK, so uh, let's say you're you're either selling. So are you selling painting paintings or are you teaching people how to paint? uh let's say selling paints okay great so let's say you're selling paintings and you need to move somebody from your list to become a customer meaning you need them to buy a painting of some kind either to order a custom one or to order uh, one that's already that already exists let's take an exa as an example of selling a custom painting 
So an entertaining way of presenting that as an idea or emailing about it was to, again, let's use storytelling because just such a great way to do it. You can do it every day in every email. People don't get tired of that. Imagine telling your list a story of um, how you've had this client who approached you and their daughter, their seven, their daughter was turning seven on November 1st. And uh, what they wanted to do is they wanted to really help their daughter have better self-esteem because they noticed that they uh, uh, that she has this very low self-esteem and she's been really struggling socially because of that. So this person comes up with this uh, idea and then approaches the illustrator and says, OK, this is what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. And then the illustrator says, OK, so let's paint your daughter um, as a superhero. We'll use uh, uh, the Supergirl or uh, the Wonder Woman as our baseline, and we will put your daughter's face on it. You know, there's going to be the cape, and she's going to be in, you know, in the power pose like that. And so they do it. She can even include then the photo of the illustration that she created in the email, and then have the feedback of the customer in the email itself. So what this does, it creates a narrative around a really boring product, if you will, right? And you can do it pretty much with anything because now you're taking a boring, mundane thing such as painting someone's face on a canvas and you're turning that into a parenting mechanism or a, a way to influence a young person's life and improve it to the better. So you take this boring thing and you make it into an exciting, useful, almost life-changing thing instead. Yeah, that's a really great perspective. That really depends on how you approach it. Uh, for the painting, like our standpoint is like more like painting a house because that's like, uh, but I mean, like, I feel like the same kind of ideas apply where oh, we can do painting a house for sure. Oh yeah. Let's I mean... do it. Because I, I mean, for most people, it's like, you know, you, but like you just paint it, but there's definitely like, song, wax off my it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But yeah, you can easily do that, Mark. You can easily take painting your house. Um, and so you can either use the example of like a decorative painting or maybe just covering uh, the mold and all this other stuff, depending on where you want to take this. But let's just say you want to do um, a cosmetic painting of a house, right? And uh, so then you can easily create an entertaining narrative uh, about keeping up with the Joneses. For instance, you know, your neighbor having a, a, this really crappy house, if you will, that's poorly painted. And as a result, that tames the neighbor's reputation as a whole. All of a sudden, you can't look at the guy without thinking he's a loser because his house isn't right or whatever. I mean, I know this from because I was born in Ukraine. And in Ukraine, you're pretty much judged by what you're driving. So first off, obviously, if you're walking and you're not driving, you're a loser. Or if you're riding a bicycle, you know. But if you're driving a, like, there's this Russian car called Volga. Uh, it's ridiculous. Just Google it later. Um, or Volga versus a Mercedes. Like if you're driving a Mercedes, you're a very wealthy, a very respected individual. If you're driving a BMW, you're a drug dealer. If you're driving a Volvo, you're a boring old man. So, you know, people judge you by the car. So in the same way, people judge you by the neighborhood you live in. They judge you by the house you live in. They judge you by your clothes, by your Gucci belt or by your $1,500 shoes. So again, you sort of, once again, you take it beyond the thing and you rather talk about the meaning or the re what it represents, the belief systems, as well as you can take news items. For instance, you can, if you're selling paint, Let's again, let's stick to the paint example. Um, let's uh, let's pretend there's been a news article about toxic paint fumes that have killed a baby. So there were there was this crew of uh, illegal immigrants from uh, Nicaragua or whatever, you know, painting someone's house. They used this really cheap, really bad paint and the toxic fumes went all the way upstairs and the baby suffocated, whatever. Like now that again, this is gory. This is kind of there's a lot of fear and then and, and a lot of, um, you know, nasty emotions, if you will. But that does not leave the customer indifferent. That makes the customer challenge what they're doing. That that means that the customer will at the very least ask next time they're buying paint or next time they're hiring someone to paint their house. They will ask about that. They will be concerned. They'll be aware. And if the customer isn't aware, the customer, um, I guess, doesn't have as much of a of an opportunity 
to differentiate you from your competitors. So you're serving both the customer and yourself at the same time. And I mean, the entertainment piece inside of the education is really fascinating to see that in play. Like very few people do it, but I, I do find myself reading more of the email from an entertainment standpoint than more of like a very obvious like info focused or like get you in this thing to sell you on something. So I feel like if you combine the entertainment, it is easier to get engagement and also to sell. But uh, one of the big pieces we need though are the actual people to entertain, to provide value to. So how do we get the people on our email list? What seems to be working best for you? Well, right now for me, there are two strategies. The one is um, actually partner up with people that already have giant e email lists and getting them to email their list with my offers. So that way I'm reaching for the lowest hanging fruit, people who are already subscribing to email, uh, in emails in that particular niche, and therefore they're easiest ones to convert. This strategy is called solo ads, and you can learn more about that in the, in the book when you read the book. Now, the other thing that's been working really cool for us is um, uh, YouTube ads. And uh, the fascinating part about YouTube ads is it's really expensive to try and get someone off YouTube and onto your email list. But compared to Facebook, compared to Twitter, compared to Pinterest, compared to all the other social media outlets, um, YouTube is uh, probably the one that I would rank the highest after direct email promotions because these people are invested. Because if they watch your video, if they are in the mindset of watching videos, sure, they're coming to YouTube for entertainment purposes, but they're also, depending on your niche, may be there to learn. For instance, I got this buddy and he's got a, a deli. So it's not a huge deli, it's in a really small town in Israel. But he started a YouTube channel and he started uh, driving ads to cooking videos where he would just make quick recipes like salads and you know, uh, ch baked chicken and things of that nature. And he, he drove sales of his deli, like he actually seen a huge increase in sales for meat, especially, especially for, for meat, because of that, because of the engagement he got as a result of using video um, in, his, um, in his traffic generation. Yeah, the, uh, the YouTube's a very, like, I love the, uh, like, I'm a YouTuber. I also watch YouTube videos and I think it's good to consume the social network to get an idea of what's working on that place. And I see the power of that platform and YouTube ads are certainly uh, very hot. Uh, just some quick tips around YouTube ads. What would you say to someone who has no idea what they're doing with YouTube ads and wants to get started? Okay, sure. Uh, so first and foremost, the place to start is not with the ads themselves. It's with what exactly are you advertising? It's your lead magnet, if you will, because most people, they sort of launch into ad creation, but they never really consider what exactly am I going to offer? So if you don't have an offer right now, that's the first thing I would recommend you do. Figure out what is the best way to attract people on your list. Are you going to give away a case study? Are you going to invite them to a webinar? Are you going to send them an article? Are you going to have them download a free episode of your podcast? You can do that. I mean, there's there's many different ways for you to do it. So you have to determine what's what's the best option for you. What's been working best for me is uh, webinars. So driving people off of a social media platform to a webinar automatically builds my list because they need to give me their email address to sign up to the webinar. And it's also allowing me to immediately establish myself with those subscribers to tell them exactly what to expect from me, to share my philosophy with them. And even though most people obviously won't buy right away, because as we've talked about, it takes 22 days on average, and that's an average, right? So for many people, it takes more than that uh, to buy from you. Um, the webinar sets the stage in a way where they want to hear from you. And where, and um, you know, considering that we get on average about 121 emails per day right now, every single one of us, um, it's really important that when you email your list, they look at the from name, at, at, at the name that from which the email is coming from and make that split decision to say, okay, that's important. I'm not deleting that. Because when people check their email, that's what they do first. They sort of go over, they scan the inbox and they're like, okay, delete, 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 spam, spam, delete, delete. And what, whenever's, whatever's left gets read or checked eventually. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's uh, good you mentioned that. So people have an idea of like, it's things that you and I probably do, like not thinking about it, but it's good to, uh, as Igor laid out, like what people are thinking as they go through their inbox, be that name that people are like, oh, I got to check this person's email. That's through the value and uh, entertainment as well, if you could uh, provide it. And I feel like everyone can, it's just a matter of working it in your emails. I'm wondering if you could share with us some of the habits that you would say have really contributed to your success. Well, that's a really great question. And um, I would probably have to break them down by department or area of my life. Uh, because, um, you know, not every habit is equally important in every area of your life. So the the strategies I or the habits I employ in my business may be a little bit different from the ones I employ in my personal relationships. But if we're talking strictly about business, I'll share a few. So the first one was uh, the strategy of or the habit of clarity. I used to just sit down in front of my computer and decide right then and there what I'm going to do for that particular day. However, that uh, at one point became very ineffective. Um, now what I do, I get clear on what I want, exactly what the outcome I'm trying to create. Then I make a list of all the things I could do to achieve that outcome. And then out of that list, I pick the one thing that will move the needle the most. And then I go and I work on that one particular thing. Now, this brings me to another habit, which I uh, adapted, I would say, in the last two years or so. And that is I don't use to-do lists anymore. And um, the reason I don't is because when I look at a to-do list this big, it's really overwhelming. And it kind of discourages me from taking action altogether. But if I set one goal for the day, just one, just one, that one big important thing that moves the needle and I get it done, I feel great about myself. And what I notice is that uh, I would typically really overestimate what I could do in one day, meaning I would set more goals than I needed to. And I would really underestimate what I could do in one year. So, for example, last year, that's been a really productive year for me, um, my like operation right was pretty much down to what is the one thing we're doing today and mm -hmm. that's that another great great habit that i started doing this past year is i started shutting off everything when i'm working so i read this great book uh, it's called um deep work highly recommend it for especially for authors or people who produce content including youtubers including really podcasters, anyone who produces any sort of creative effort at all. And um, that book really broke down what happens on an average workday for most people, including creative professionals, and turned out that you know, on an average like um, year, hundreds upon hundreds of hours go into text messaging and chatting with people and, and, you know, liking things on Facebook. And more than that, they also, these are the, usually the activities that break your focus, break your creativity, break your ability to produce. Therefore, by completely shutting yourself off from all of that stuff. Uh, so, for example, when you're producing a YouTube video, you don't really need a connection to the Internet. You can produce it offline and upload right. it later. Right. When you shut everything off, you're able to produce much better content. You do it way faster. And then um, you just notice that the impact is so much greater. Yeah, I definitely love those habits. I, I, one of the big themes, like that deep level of focus, deep work, uh, that book will be in the show notes for anyone who's interested. We'll also throw in Igor's book, igorsbook.com, the list building lifestyle. If you want to learn how to build your email list, engage with your list, that's the book for you. Igor, where are some of the other places we could find your work as well? Well, I do a lot of work in the make money online space because that's where I started and that's the niche I'm most passionate about it. You know, making money from home, from your laptop, from your cell phone, uh, it truly has been the, the most incredible thing that I believe happened to us as a society, allowing people to just live anywhere in the world. And again, I talk more about that in the book, but if you want to learn, uh, I guess, more intimately with me, then you should check out lizbuildinglifestyle.com where you can join my mastermind and um, get access to me, my inner circle, and some really, really cool training on how to start building your list and how to use email marketing in your business um, for just $3.23 per day. Wow. 
Well, that'll definitely be in the show notes as well for anyone who wants to check it out. Anyone who wants to schedule a free call, see how we can work together with your podcast, YouTube, or just making money with content in general, markthebirdie.com slash strategy is the link for you. Igor, once again, thank you so much for coming on Breakthrough Success. It was such a pleasure having you on the show. 